Hey group one, so let's take a look at your first year of marriage. So we have the four of pentacles to start us off. We have the two of cups. We have the four of wands. So with the repeating fours here and then the two in the middle, really makes me feel like your first year of marriage is going to be all about building a solid foundation for the years to come. So a lot of planning for the future, even in your first year of marriage. We have the two of pentacles. Yeah, like look at the gears here. Like let's get this set up. Let's get a routine flowing. Let's get like mutual agreement on, you know, like household chores, responsibilities, stuff like that. Um, and then we also have the full card. So you know, the full card makes a lot of sense, right? For your first year of marriage, you're starting a new chapter of your lives together. It's not just you anymore, it's we, it's us. You know, even the language that you use to speak about your future, your future isn't just yours anymore, right? It's ours, our future together. So, you know, I mean, and again, another two. So it really is about a partnership and this coming together and I so I feel like you know you and your future spouse are really you know you're not really uh <laughs> go with the flow um in this first year of marriage you know you're not like oh let's just figure it out as we go along mm -mm. <laughs> you two are planning a lot so you know, this could look like, okay, let's figure out how we can get our dream home. You know, let's get our forever home. Like you two are like long-term planners. And so, you know, you're sitting down and you're like, you know, when are we going to take our vacation together? When, you know, like let's do a trip once a year or twice a year. Let's work out my PTO time versus your PTO time. You know, like if you're both working full-time jobs, you know, like you're just planning a lot. You know, it's not like, oh, let's just make it up as we go along. Like you two are really thinking about your future. Um, if you're wanting children, I definitely feel like that's another thing that you two could be planning out. Um, and I don't know if this is how you are naturally or if this is the influence of your future spouse, but, you know, there's a lot of discussions going on about what the future holds for you two and, like, what you two want, um, you know, your marriage to look like, how you want your lives together to look like. So you're figuring out how to combine, like, your assets, how to combine your resources, um, you know, there's just a lot here about long-term planning. And so, you know, I, I would say like looking at your tarot cards, the advice also from, you know, spirit, the guidance from spirit here is to also just have fun, you know, like don't forget like in, in all of this planning, you know, in all of these like serious talks that you two are having together, don't forget to also just to have fun and to enjoy this experience, enjoy your first year of marriage, um, you know, because it is going to be a lot down the road. Like there's always unexpected challenges that come up, you know, that's just life. And so enjoy this time that you have together. Enjoy just the newness of it. And don't be so focused on what the future will hold for you two on don't get so wrapped up in the long-term planning and long-term goals that you're missing out on just the present moment and just enjoying this new experience, you know, of being newlyweds, you know, don't get so lost up in everything. But I definitely feel like you guys are both like very busy people. Um, and I feel like you're trying to accomplish a lot. I will say though, this is a very like passionate connection, like with everything that you have going on, um, I, I feel like you two are definitely able to juggle a lot together and there is definitely a lot of commitment coming forward, you know, commitment to the date nights, you know, commitment to making time for intimacy and togetherness and quality time, you know, um, so there's definitely, I mean, both of you are like go-getters, you know, for sure. And your group one, group one tends to carry that energy of being very ambitious. I will say that, you know, like they're the leaders, they're first. Um, and also like I was drawn to the circus tarot deck for you all. And so this is like my fiery deck. This is my deck of performers, of creatives, of 
people who like to juggle a lot. I mean, you think about a circus and how many moving parts there are to creating this beautiful performance, right? And so there, and even just the artwork, right? Like it's very explosive and yet it's also very dreamy and very mystical. And so I definitely feel like there's a lot of love to this connection for sure. I mean, people get married for a lot of reasons, right? Like, you know, some people get married because their family wants them to get married. Some people get married for practical reasons, um, you know, like taxes and stuff, <laughs> you know, like there's a lot of, you know, some people get married because they get pregnant, you know, not everyone marries for love. And so I can definitely provide that reassurance that, you know, you both are completely, totally head over heels in love. I mean, look at this four of wands. Like this is the card of celebration and marriage, but look at how it's depicted here. I mean, these two lovers, right? Like suspended in the air and it looks magical. It looks mystical, right? But it looks very passionate, right? It, it's like they're dancing in the air. And even the two of cups here, you know, like pouring into each other's cup. And so it is, um, definitely a production, <laughs> you know, like definitely <sighs> kind of figuring out sort of the nuts and bolts of your life together. I think that from the outside, it looks very easy. It looks very effortless. You know, like if you look at these two performers, they look like professionals, right? But there was a lot of training and a lot of effort and a lot of rehearsals to get it to look like this. And so I feel like that's another sort of guidance from spirit, but also I feel like from the outside, it looks like you two have like a perfect relationship. Like I definitely feel like appearances are very important to both you and your future spouse. Like you guys just like to show up as a united front. You know, you don't like to argue in front of other people. You don't like to create scenes. Like you want to seem like you two have it all together. And you know, I think there also may be an element here where material abundance is important to you and important to your future spouse. And there's nothing wrong with that. But I think that you two have big dreams together. Like you want your dream house. You want to take your dream vacations together. You want to, you know, have children who grow up to be successful, maybe, you know, if you're wanting kids. But you know, there's an element here almost of striving for perfection a little bit. Um, but I feel like you guys don't like to give any ammo to people who like to gossip, you know, like you don't want to feed into that. And so again, it's that united front. But I think as effortless as you two make it seem from the outside, there's a lot of work that goes into this marriage and to making this relationship work, right? Uh, and that's the nature of it. And so, you know, I think part of the guidance here from Spirit also is that give give both of give both of you some grace here because you're newlyweds, you're figuring it out, and not everything is going to be perfect on the first go, right? You know, it may take a couple of rehearsals, right? It may take a couple of tries to figure it out, whether it's your day-to-day -day routine, figuring out how to balance work and like home life, you know, it may take a bit of an adjustment period. You're in a transitional stage in your first year of marriage. And so, you know, just give both you and your partner some grace. Okay, let's continue onward. So there's a lot going on for sure. And I will say too, with the full card, I definitely feel like this is probably your partner's first marriage or your first marriage or for both of you. Um, that may not be the case for all of you, but just given the fact that we have the full card here, um, it feels like it's your first time being married. Okay, we have obedience, we have solitary, and we have transformation. I, I do feel like that is, if we're talking about like what would be maybe like the biggest hurdle in your first year of marriage, I think it's the fact that you both have strong personalities, you both like to be in the role of the leader, you both like to be in charge, and that may not be like you want to be in charge of them, you know, I don't mean necessarily that you or them are like really bossy, but if you've been living on your own or if, you know, you've been single for a while, you're used to doing your own thing, you know, and you're used to, 
you, you, you kind of get maybe a little set in your ways, right? And so I think it, there may be a little bit of a push and pull because I definitely feel like there's probably some fire signs in this group. Um, and I'm a Leo myself, so I get it. But I feel like there may be a little bit of push and pull in terms of, you know, taking it from dating, you know, and then being engaged to actually being married and living together full time and having everything combined all of a sudden may feel a bit overwhelming. So if there was any hurdle, it would be figuring out like what you're in charge of versus what I'm in charge of versus what we're both in charge of, what's your responsibility versus my responsibility, you know, and juggling all of these different things that you guys have going on. Because you both seem like, you know, pretty busy people. And I think for some of you too, like you do like your alone time. And so, you know, um, that may also be another aspect of this of, you know, trying to navigate having your own space, even though you're married and living with this person. Um, but I, I definitely feel like there's also this element here of going from feeling like you have a house to feeling like you have a home. And I think that's probably the biggest blessing in all of this in your first year of marriage is that, you know, you finally feel that sense of home and that sense of belonging where maybe you never really felt like that before, you know, um, you know, maybe you had a nice apartment before you got married, but you know, maybe you still went through those phases of feeling kind of lonely or like, this is just temporary. Like, I know this isn't my forever home. I'm not going to be in this apartment forever. And, you know, then meeting your person and then moving in together and getting married and feeling settled finally, I think is going to be really nice because there's this feeling of like, I'm putting down roots and yet I also feel really free for the first time ever. And it's that nice kind of strange dichotomy, you know, like it's, it's hard to put into words like what that feeling is going to really feel like <laughs> for lack of a better uh, phrase there. But yeah. Um, and, and, and there's also this feeling too of like, okay, it's not just me calling the shots anymore. Like I have this other person to think about. And you know, in some aspects, that's really easy and it feels really natural. And in other aspects, you know, it may take, you know, like I said, a bit of an adjustment period. I'm also hearing that you're going to take a lot of trips by the sea or that you're going to live by the sea. So, and I don't know if it's necessarily the sea, the ocean, a lake, but there's something there about feeling this connection to a body of water. Um, that may be because of your future spouse. Like maybe they're from a place where they're is a lot of water, <laughs> you know, like maybe they grew up at the beach or maybe they're from an island, but there's something there about a connection to water being really special and something that you both really, um, you both really end up enjoying. We have Mojo, Focus, Motion, and Ascent. And we have Sing, Vocalize, Communicate, and Chant. One really positive aspect of your first year of marriage is that both of you are going to be starting to understand each other's um, love languages, I think, a lot better than you did even when you were dating and engaged. Um, there's something there about being really attuned to each other's needs without the other person necessarily needing to say it directly. Um, so I, I think you two are both going to be getting in closer alignment I just keep hearing attunement, like you're going to be more attuned to what the other person needs. And I mean, when you live with someone and you're married to them and you're sharing, you know, your lives together, you know, in the most, you know, committed way possible, right? Um, you are, of course, going to get to know them on an even deeper level than you did before. And so I feel like that's a really positive thing is that you both are, you know, starting to understand even the non-verbal, you know, like body language cues, signals that the other person is sending out without them necessarily having to tell you directly or you having to tell them directly. So I think communication is definitely going to be improving. I also feel like you, you feel a lot more confident in your life. Um, I, I think you feel even... 
I, and not to say that there's going to be a lot of issues with your future spouse's family or friends, but I feel like maybe if you were a bit more hesitant to express yourself, if you felt um, maybe a little bit awkward about disagreeing with your in-laws or maybe you were just more reserved, more shy around your future spouse's siblings or maybe you were worried about them judging you or not liking you or having any anxiety about that or even their friends, um, I definitely feel like that's going away. You're feeling like you can express yourself, you can be yourself. You know, you just feel more confident now that this is your partner, you know, and not just, you know, your boyfriend or your girlfriend. So, you know, I think that is another positive aspect that's coming out, um, is this increase in confidence. I also feel like one of the biggest benefits here is that both you and your future spouse are on the same page about what is important, what your values are, and what you two are growing towards. So you both share the same goals, which is really nice, you know. Um, I think one of the biggest challenges in any marriage is if one person wants something that the other person doesn't, right? Like if one person wants kids and the other person doesn't, where do you go from there, right? Like that's really difficult and challenging to overcome something like that. You know, that can definitely lead to a divorce if people don't have those discussions prior to getting married. And I feel like, you know, given the fact that we had so many tarot cards that were speaking to you both having serious discussions about your long-term plans and a real focus on the future together, that's a huge benefit to come through, a big advantage for your marriage. And what is creating that stable foundation for you two is that you two did have those serious talks even before you got married. So you're on the same page, you know, which is really, really nice. We have Cancer, we have Air, and we have Sagittarius. What a nice little combination, huh? Okay, so air sign, that could um, speak to Gemini, Aquarius, and Libra. We have the sign of Cancer, which relates to the fourth house. And remember, you got a lot of repeating fours in the beginning of your reading. And then Sagittarius, we were talking about fire sign energy, and Sagittarius is a fire sign. Cancer is a water sign. And Sagittarius uh, is mutable fire, so it's the heat that scatters from the fire. So think of Sagittarius as being a very warm sign. And so this warmth of Sagittarius combined with the coziness of Cancer is a really nice dynamic, okay? So there's a lot to unpack in these cards. Um, this could be referring to maybe some of your um, birth chart placements or um, some of the placements in your future spouse's chart as well, but I wanna get into what this means for your first year of marriage. So with Cancer here, there's a huge focus on the home, a huge focus on family, a huge focus on creating a comforting sort of safe haven for both of you in your marriage. And so, you know, this means that you're going to have a marriage where you feel really comfortable expressing your feelings, you know, even if it's something that you think might trigger your, your future spouse or might, you know, upset them, you still feel like you can express how you feel. You know, you're not scared to say you're angry. You're not scared to say you're anxious or upset or hurt. You know, you feel comfortable opening up to your future spouse, you know, about what you're afraid of and, you know, those deepest feelings that, you know, maybe you keep private from everyone else because while cancer has a lot of emotional depth, it also has that hard outer shell, right? And so I also feel like there's a sense of protectiveness between the both of you. And remember how I said in the beginning, you two really care about appearances and, you know, creating this like, uh, how do I say it? This image, this image of a united front. So you have the kind of marriage where if your future spouse does something you don't agree with, you're not going to call them out in front of a room full of people, even if it's family. You're going to pull them to the side and tell them how you feel and say like, hey, like, I didn't think it was cool that you did this or, hey, like, I think you should reconsider this or, you know, see this other side to something. So you're not afraid to disagree with your future spouse, but you're not going to like do it in a public way where they get embarrassed or humiliated, right? Or you know, where it seems like they're being chastised, right? There's a sense of loyalty and respect. And 
you know, they would do the same thing for you because there is this energy here of reciprocity. And, um, yeah, so... I'm sorry, I'm getting like a little bit off track because there's a lot of messages coming through here. Um, what else was I going to say with cancer? Oh, a sense of protectiveness too. So let's say someone was being really rude or disrespectful to you. You have the kind of marriage where your future spouse would step in and defend you and support you. And not that they don't think that you can't protect or, you know, defend yourself, but it's like, I'm your partner I should be supporting you. And again, like you would do the same thing for them. Now, um, with Sagittarius being here, I definitely feel like there's a mutual love for like travel and exploring. And I think that's why like that vacation message was coming through in the beginning that you two will really prioritize like vacations and trips, um, you know, in that sense of togetherness. So I definitely feel like quality time could be a love language for at least one of you. Um, and you two are very, like, again, that forward motion, right? That concern for the future, like, wanting to build a better future for both of you. And so, you know, there's a lot of optimism and hopefulness. Um, and I like the balance here between the water and the fire because there's this deep emotional bond between you two. But then you also have a lot of fun together. And it's still playful. And you can still joke around with each other. And especially with air sign energy coming through as well. Remember how we were talking about communication being so good? Even in your first year of marriage, like communication is improving between you two. That's that air sign energy coming through all day long, 110%. And I feel like as well, um, you two are also open um, to learning from each other. And I definitely feel like you both respect what the other person brings to the table in your relationship. Um, I do think that you two might be the kind of couple that has like very defined roles because you both seem like very organized. And so like, I mean, organization can come through in different ways, but you two seem to like defined expectations is probably a better way of saying it. And so, you know, like one of you knows, like even on the day to day, like it's my job to take out the trash versus it's your job to do the cooking. You know what I mean? Like you two respect each other's strengths and you play off of each other's strengths really, really well. And so rather than letting your differences divide you two, it actually makes you stronger and brings you together, right? We have painting poppies, we have gift revealed, and we have reflections here. Okay. Now with this gift revealed, um, I definitely feel like, especially because we got Sagittarius um, earlier, there is this element of like, at least one of you likes to surprise the other person a lot. So you could take like surprise trips or, you know, your future spouse could come home one day and just surprise you with flowers or a thoughtful gift, um, you know, like little gestures for each other, um, I think are kind of a hallmark of your marriage. Um, there is an element here of a little bit of um, theatricality, right? Because I was drawn to the circus deck for you all. So, you know, at least one of you likes a big romantic gesture as well. Um, and so this could be like, you know, you have a partner who likes to throw you a surprise party for your birthday. And maybe you start to expect it, <laughs> you know, after a while. But the first time they get you really good, right? Um so stuff like that. I think there is a real sweetness here to your connection as well because th there's an element here of just thoughtfulness um, and mutual effort. With painting poppies, you definitely like to have fun together. You like to try new things together. Um, at least one of you is very adventurous and likes to explore a lot. And so um, it could be that the other person is, you know, sort of influencing the other person to be a little bit braver, be a little bit bolder, have a bit more fun, be a bit more lighthearted. Um, painting poppies could also signify that you two do a lot of like home improvement or DIY projects together, um, especially if like you're focused on having like your dream or your forever home. You may purchase a fixer upper or decide to build your own house or, you know, even if you move into a nice home, you may want to personalize it, you know, make it really your own. And so 
Um, as this could also speak to as well, like maybe both of you are very creative people. And so, you know, maybe you guys both really enjoy music or art or cinema, something like that. And that's, you know, something that you bond over, something that brings you two together as well. Painting poppies could also signify that you two have children early on in your marriage. So maybe, you know, one of you gets pregnant in the first year of marriage, or you're just already having those conversations about having children. You know, that message isn't going to resonate, obviously, if you don't want kids, but um, that is true for some of you. Now with this reflections card, I feel like there are definitely going to be moments in your first year of marriage because you both are so like future focused where it's like you're already going to be having almost like these out of body kind of feelings where you just kind of look around and you're like, I can't believe I'm here. Like, I can't believe I'm married to my person. I can't believe we're sharing our life together. Like, it's going to feel a bit surreal. And I feel like you're going to be experiencing these moments of, like, intense gratitude for your life. You know, I feel like a lot of you really prayed for this. You know, you prayed for a marriage like this. You prayed for a person like this in your life. And even when you're in your first year of marriage, you're still going to be feeling so grateful that it's all happening, you know? Um, I think you both went through a lot to get to this point, um, you know, a, a lot in your personal lives, I mean. And so you're gonna feel really grateful that, you know, you have each other and you're not, you're not um, on your own just trying to survive anymore. You're with someone else and you're thriving and you're, you're building a life together and it, it feels nice because I feel like you both are really strong individuals, but to have someone else to support you and not have to be so strong all the time on your own, I think is going to be, um, yeah, again, just something that you're really grateful for. Okay. So this is just an advice card for your first year of marriage from the Cat Guardians. And this card right here is going to represent a little bit of a clue of who your future spouse is. <laughs> so we have Lucky Lucy. I actually really, really like that this card came out because I feel like this is spirit nudging me that I forgot a message here. <laughs> so with Sagittarius, Sagittarius is connected to the planet Jupiter, which is the planet of luck and expansion and abundance. And so your first year of marriage, you're going to be experiencing a lot of lucky occurrences. It's going to feel like almost like the universe is like smiling down on you a little bit. Um, you know, you're going to feel... Like I said, really lucky, really grateful to be in the place where you're at. But also here, you could find that things just seem to work out a little bit easier now that you're married. Um, so this could be like maybe when you were engaged, you were house hunting and you were really struggling to find like that property that was really going to meet all of your needs, all of your future spouse's needs. But then after you get married and you come back from your honeymoon and you're looking for houses again, like bam, the first house you tour, you're like, this is it. Or this is the property that we've been looking for. This is where we can build our future home. Um, you know, and it's like, man, we spent all that time searching. And then as soon as we're married and we go back to our search, we find the perfect place. So it's stuff like that, um, where things just feel like they fall into place a lot easier for you. And I feel like Lucky Lucy is also encouraging you. And I, and I think you're already doing it with the Reflections card. But just remember to take the good with the good and the bad with the bad. You know, when things are good, be grateful. And when things are bad, know that you at least have someone to hold your hand and support you through it. And also the universe has your back. So even when things are bad or you feel like they're bad or challenging, ultimately there is a purpose behind it, right? Okay. With the devil card here, I really feel like your person could have some Capricorn placements, especially because we have, um, you know, that feeling in the beginning of your future spouse being like a go-getter, being ambitious, um, being really hardworking, so they definitely could have some Capricorn placements. Also, I feel like um, physical intimacy <laughs> between you and your future spouse is um, going to be really, really good. Um, I definitely feel like that's 
kind of, I don't want to say it's like one of the best aspects of, you know, like your first year of marriage, but it's definitely mm, <laughs> a key aspect, right? Because you guys have a lot of good stuff going on between you two. Um, but yeah, physical intimacy, it's great. And I mean, you would hope you would hope for that, right? In your first year of marriage, you wouldn't want things to already be stale <laughs> when you just got married. Um, so yes, if that was a concern for some of you, if some of you have some insecurities in that area, um, I feel like that is, you know, spirit providing some reassurance for you. Okay. All right. I also think here with the devil card, this is speaking on a more serious note that your future spouse has overcome a lot. And that we were saying that, right? Like both you and your future spouse are strong individuals. So your future spouse is someone who has worked through their issues, you know, like we all, <laughs> we all have things that we need to work on, right? We all have personal, um, you know, sort of challenges around self-development, right? We're not born perfect. We don't die perfect, <laughs> you know, like self-development, self-love, it's a process, right? Like, you know, hopefully we, we continue to grow throughout our entire lives. And so, you know, I think this is spirit really calling attention to the fact that your future spouse is someone who has been on a healing journey, has, you know, really done the work, you know, has really taken a look at themselves and seen like how they had some maybe, you know, unhealthy coping mechanisms in the past. And, you know, they really kind of face their inner demons and come out on the other side of it, you know, a stronger person for it. And so, you know, this isn't going to be someone who looks to you to fulfill all their needs. This is going to be someone who, you know, can really stand tall on their own as an individual. And so, you know, if you are worried about maybe codependency or something like that, that's definitely not going to be an issue within your marriage. You're, you guys are both going to retain your individuality. And then when you come together, you're going to be really strong as a unit together as a team. Because that's really what it feels like, like you two are a team, which is really nice. All right, group one, this was your first year of marriage. I hope you enjoyed the reading and I will see you in my next one. Let's take a look at your first year of marriage. We have the Ten of Pentacles to start us off. We have the Nine of Pentacles. Okay, get it. <laughs> we have the Six of Wands. We have the Ace of Pentacles. And we have the Two of Cups. That's very cute because Group 1 also got the Two of Cups. Love that for um, your first year of marriage, right? 
Wow. Okay. So this is very, very positive. Um, I definitely feel like the focus here in your first year of marriage is obviously like very heavily um, centered around finances, given the fact that we have three pentacles cards, but they're all positive, right? Like the ace of pentacles can talk about new job opportunities, unexpected sources of income. Um, this could also even just speak to the fact that you got a lot of generous like wedding gifts, <laughs> you know, um, that you're still enjoying. You know, your future spouse may come from a wealthy background with the nine and the 10 of pentacles and the ace being here. This almost feels like generational wealth. And so, you know, this could also be your energy. Um, but, you know, it could be that your future spouse is someone who works for their family's business and they have a very successful family business, you know, and when you marry them, you almost marry into the family business as well. And so, you know, you play a part in that or you at least support them as they, you know, fulfill that role of, you know, taking on a, a significant role in the family business. And I could even speak to, you know, if we take this a bit further outside of your first year of marriage, um, if you're wanting children with this person, you know, this could speak to the fact that your kids will grow up and eventually take on a role in the family business as well. Um, but yeah, and this could also um, be that maybe you're gifted a house by your in-laws or you're gifted some property. Um, you know, I've seen that happen sometimes with people when they marry into uh, money, <laughs> you know. Um, you know, it could be that your future spouse's parents are like, oh, we have some property at the beach, you know, and so now all of a sudden you have a beach house or you move there or, you know, um, things, like, things like that. Or like I said, a generous like um, wedding gift. So maybe your in-laws surprise you with a nice honeymoon package or something like that. Um, but it definitely feels like you have a lot of gifts coming in, whether, you know, through family members or friends or through the universe. Um, it could also speak to you and, you know, possibly your future spouse as well, maybe in your first year of marriage, you end up getting um, a promotion that was unexpected, or you get a new job offer that was unexpected. And so there's a lot of financial abundance. There's a lot of security in your first year of marriage, but there's also a focus on continuing to grow with the six of wands. And so at least one of you is like very successful. And at least one of you is maybe even like a public figure or someone who's really respected in their community or in their field of work. Um, and you could have a marriage where one of you takes care of the domestic home life and the other person, because they don't have to, you know, focus on the domestic chores and the day-to-day -day responsibilities of running a household they can put all of their effort and energy into their career. And so, you know, both of you have very valuable roles to creating this abundant life together, but they're very split, right? Like, so one person works outside of the home and one person works inside of the home. That message may not resonate for all of you, but with the two of cups, like everything is very fair and balanced in this relationship. And there's a lot of mutual respect for, you know, what, one person does in their role versus what the other person does. Um, now, both of you may work outside of the home, you know, and both of you may be very, like, financially successful. Um, and I also feel like, um, especially with the Ten of Pentacles being here, this card always makes me think of family and togetherness. So you could also, in your first year of marriage, be spending a lot of time with either your family or your future spouse's family or both of your families. I feel like family is really important here. And so it could also be, um, cause I'm drawn to like the different like skin colors here. It could be that, um, your future spouse is from a different culture than you are. And in at least your culture or their culture, family is really, really important. And, you know, there are some cultures, what's the word for it, that are more, like, collaborative, I guess. Um, whereas other cultures are a bit more individualistic. I feel like I'm missing the word that I want to use. 
maybe it'll come to me. But yeah, so maybe one of you um, has the sort of family where everyone pitches in, everyone helps out. And so, you know, you're not gonna, if you do have children eventually, and I know I'm taking this a little bit further than your first year of marriage, but if you do have children eventually, you know, you wouldn't have to worry about putting your kids in daycare or anything like that. Like you would have family members or their family would be like very supportive and helpful and pitching in. Like it feels like even the family unit is like a community itself. And so there's a lot of togetherness. Um, so taking it back to your first year of marriage, um, I feel like there is, you know, a lot of busyness, you know, at least one of you is working really hard in their career. But I feel like even if your future spouse is working really hard outside of the home in their career, I feel like you would have a lot of family support to kind of pick up, you know, some of the slack at home because running a household is a huge endeavor in and of itself. Um, and um, I also feel like family holidays, family traditions are going to be a big mainstay of your first year of marriage. So there's a lot of, you know, like weekend barbecues and, um, you know, a lot of birthday parties to go to, you know, I feel like maybe it's you or maybe it's your future spouse, but somebody comes from a large family as well. So like, not only is it close knit, but it's a large family. So there's a lot of cousins and you know, a lot of uncles and, um, you know, nieces and nephews and like, you know, all of this. And so, yeah. Um, trying to think if there are any other messages coming through here. Even with this two of cups, because, you know, I didn't use this tarot deck for every single group, just yours. Even with this one, you see how like she's coming from the water, but this person's coming from the shore they really may be from a different country, you know, or have like a different cultural background than you because it does feel like bringing together like two different worlds. Um, and it could just be talking about the issue of money here. Like maybe you come from, you know, a lower socioeconomic background, but they come from like old money. And so it's like the colliding, you know, the bringing together of, you know, two different worlds, two different backgrounds, you know, you both had two very different childhoods, you know what I mean? Or again, you know, like they have different, you know, cultural traditions and stuff that are going to be new to you. So maybe you'll be celebrating holidays that maybe you've never even heard of or you're not that familiar with because they come from a different culture than you. So that could also be something. You could also be getting some pets in your first year of marriage, or maybe you have a pet and they have some pets and you're trying to like combine uh, your household together and navigating that. I also feel like um, you're really going to enjoy your outdoor space. So whether you're living in a townhome, an apartment, a house, doesn't matter, there's gonna be some sort of access to green space that you're really going to enjoy and that you and your future spouse are going to spend a lot of time together on. I know that's a very specific <laughs> message, but uh, it did come through. So I definitely wanted to mention it. Also feel like um, your future spouse could also express their love, not necessarily through buying you gifts exactly. Like for example, they may not express their love by buying you jewelry, but I feel like they would express their love by buying you an experience. So they may like come through and say like, hey, like we're gonna take a trip to France or something like that, you know? So, or they may plan a cruise, or if you tell them that you've always wanted to go zip lining, but you've never had an opportunity then the next thing you know, they're like, hey, like I set up this trip and we're going to go zip lining, you know, stuff like that. Because I think especially if they're the ones who come from money, then they've probably had opportunities and experiences that maybe you've never had before. You know, if you were resonating with that message of coming from, you know, a lower socioeconomic background and, you know, like, you know, you've come from humble beginnings then they may want to sort of share those experiences with you and like want to treat you to things that, you know, you didn't have the opportunity to do when you were growing up. 
Whereas, you know, they may have traveled the world by the time they were 10, you know, that kind of thing. Or even just taking you, um, sorry, I started like stirring my smoothie. Um, they may even like want to take you to really fancy restaurants, you know, like an experience because, you know, like maybe you've never had five star dining before. I don't know, you know? I also saw the fluffy orange um, stray cat that I feed outside. It's always a sign of good luck if they show up in your reading. So group two, your first year of marriage will be very blessed. If we didn't know it before, every single one of these cards is positive. I mean, you didn't get anything that looked concerning. I mean, nothing about any of this is <laughs> like remotely negative. So, I mean, kudos to you, group two. Okay, we have relaxation, we have enthusiasm, and we have purpose. Okay. I definitely feel like both of you are really excited to be married. Um, like I was telling group one, like not everyone marries for love, right? <laughs> so I feel like both of you are genuinely like so excited to be starting this chapter of your lives together. And I really feel like there's a lot of opportunities for quality time, even if, you know, one of you is like super busy with work or both of you are busy with work, there's still opportunities to take time to just enjoy each other. And I feel like especially if your future spouse is the one who is working really hard, I feel like in their downtime, they're the type of person that just wants to relax. You know, like especially if they have a job that is really demanding, um, you know, that requires a lot of intellect and like skill level, when they're in their downtime, like they just need a mental break. They just need a rest. And so you know, they want to take it easy. And I definitely feel like your future spouse is someone who appreciates luxury and <laughs> likes the finer things in life. And um, I definitely feel like when it's like they work really hard. You know how they say like work hard to play hard? This person works hard to relax. <laughs> you know, like when when they're done at the end of the day, they just want to take it easy. And I feel like, you know, they just want you by their side and they just want to soak up the scenery. You know, they just want to relax. And so, um, you know, it's like this person is really driven, but they enjoy a good massage. You know, they enjoy uh, a nice candlelit dinner. You know, they're like, nah, we're not cooking. Let's just hire a chef and have them come over. You know, it's that kind of energy. I'm even being drawn here to like the birds and how they're all contributing to this like nest here. So I feel like this is echoing that sentiment that we had before about there being a large family that's really close knit and collaborative and very helpful. And so, you know, I think sometimes that's really nice, but if we're going to balance out this reading and bring like some grounded energy here, um, you know, maybe sometimes that could be a little bit overwhelming. Like you have a really busy household, you have a lot of family visitings like very frequently or their family lives close by, you know, that kind of thing. Like, you know, especially if you don't come from a large family, that may be a little bit overwhelming at times to have so much family so many friends, um, you know, around so much, you know, that might be a little bit overwhelming, but you will always have help. You will always have help. Whatever you need, they are there, you know, and I feel like the family bond is incredibly strong. And when you get married to your future spouse, it's going to be like, you are a part of this family. You know, you're not just so-and-so's wife. You are now my sister, you are now my daughter too. You know what I mean? Like it, they really bring you into the inner circle. They really make you feel like you belong here with us. We have Saturn here. We have Scorpio and we have Capricorn. Okay. Um, so basically you got Capricorn twice now, um, because 
Saturn rules Capricorn. And so definitely that could be, um, you know, your sun sign, your future spouse's sun sign, or, you know, it just could be like a repeating placement in your birth chart or their birth chart. Um, but even more than that, I feel like this is echoing all of the pentacles cards that you got in your tarot because pentacles is earth sign energy and Capricorn is an earth sign. And so I think this is really speaking to the fact that both of you are very disciplined, maybe in different ways, but both of you are very disciplined and both of you are willing to do the work, you know? And so there may be, because Saturn can bring its challenges, right? And Saturn can be father time and it can talk about hard lessons learned, but you get a lot of wisdom from it. So there may be points in your first year of marriage where you do feel really challenged and you do feel like, how are we going to overcome this as a couple? But I feel like both of you are willing to do that work. Both of you are willing to put in the effort with the two of cups. And so, yeah, there may be a couple of little tests during your first year of marriage, but it's going to make you stronger as a couple. And with the Scorpio here, I feel like this is speaking to this idea of you two growing together because Scorpio talks about transformation and change and, you know, clearing out the old to bring in the new. So there may be this feeling of, wow, like that was really, really hard. I can't believe we got through that together. And so there's like, yes, there's like a lot of financial success and abundance in your first year of marriage, but money isn't everything, right? So maybe something really hard does happen in your first year of marriage. Like maybe a parent gets sick. And so, you know, you have to learn how to be a caregiver to, you know, maybe they're, maybe your mother-in-law or something like that. I I'm just throwing out examples here. I'm not saying that's going to definitely happen. And there could just be a big challenge, you know, and it's unexpected. And so you're like, wow, like, how do we navigate this together? Um, you know, how do we step up as a couple and come together? And so ultimately, it's going to make you stronger as a couple. And it's going to kind of set that strong foundation for your future. Because if you can overcome this challenge, even in your even as newlyweds, think about how strong you will be together when you've been married 10, 15, 20 years, right? So I think ultimately it will be um, very positive. I think this is also just echoing this idea that like work life is going to be like a big thing in your first year of marriage. Um, you know, that may be a challenge for one or both of you, like how to balance work life with home life. Um, I'm hearing also with this Scorpio energy that something about your first year of marriage is going to feel really healing for you for you personally, okay? Because I know there's been a lot of back and forth here of like, well, this could be you or your future spouse. You know, honestly, sometimes the energy gets really muddled in these future spouse readings. But specifically for you, I am hearing group two, there's going to be something that is very healing about your first year of marriage. So if you have some kind of like deep rooted issue, because it's Scorpio, so it's going to be deep, you know, like maybe you have a fear of abandonment, or maybe you have some trust issues, or um, maybe you have some fears around like financial scarcity even. Um, this first year of marriage is going to be very, very healing and personally transformative for you. We have authenticity. We have free spirit. And we have ancient memory. Okay, so this could be speaking to the idea that you and your future spouse um, share some past life connection here. So it could definitely be a soulmate relationship. Um, this right here is also making me think of that generational wealth that we were picking up on in the very beginning with the Ten of Pentacles. As it says inheritance here. And so I feel like your future spouse um, comes from a long line of a family who does a certain thing and it's that they're really well known for that thing. So maybe they come from, maybe it's that family business we were talking about, or maybe they come from a long line of doctors or a long line of lawyers, um, you know, 
dentists, I don't know, <laughs> but they all have done the same thing, um, or in the military, you know, um, there's something that their family is known for. And then with the free spirit card, you know, I think that financial abundance buys a lot of freedom, right? Like when you are financially secure, you have the ability to do more things, you know, you can try more things, you can travel more, you can have different experiences. When you're not living paycheck to paycheck, it really um, unburdens you from a lot of worry and stress. And so, you know, if you're someone who's always had financial struggles, you know, to marry someone who comes from the exact opposite of that, um, that could definitely feel like a freeing experience to not have to worry about money maybe for the first time in your life. Um, for others of you, this could be speaking to this idea of you feeling more confident and you feeling more free because you have this secure and stable home life, even in your first year of marriage, you know, with your partner here. Because I feel like this free spirit card goes hand in hand with this authenticity card, you know, just feeling more free, feeling more lighthearted, feeling like things are headed in a good direction. And so I feel like you feel really secure within your relationship. You know, there's not these, you know, there's not this fear of like infidelity or, and this could be like picking up on this Scorpio card. Like maybe you've been cheated on a lot in the past. And so what is healing for you in your first year of marriage is that you're with someone that you can actually trust. Um, that's just an example, but could be something like that as well. We have the birth of magic. We have the balancing act. We have trespassers and we have lighting the way. There's a little bit of overlap between you and group one. Um, just a little bit here. Okay. With this birth of magic card, um, this could be speaking to the fact that maybe you get pregnant in your first year of marriage. Um, I feel like this is also signifying, though, this idea of transformation with that Scorpio card that we were getting before as well. And this feeling of, like, not knowing that life could be this good. Because I feel like for you groups, too, like, you've had a, a really difficult maybe life up until you meet your future partner, um, your future spouse. And so, you know, like maybe there's this idea of like almost feeling like things get better overnight, <laughs> you know, like you're having almost like this like Cinderella moment. And so um, it may feel, especially with the lighting the way card, this always makes me think of the hermit energy because um, of the lantern here. And so yeah, like maybe you were really lonely before and, you know, having to struggle and survive on your own. And now it's like, yeah, the money's good, but there's also this idea of family and togetherness and like support and loyalty and like trust that you didn't even, you didn't even know that was possible because maybe your family dynamic growing up was very different. And so, you know, I feel like there's a sense here of like support and community that maybe you haven't experienced before. Um, maybe you have a lot of struggles within your family. And so to see a family that's so loving and connected and supportive might be something that feels really magical to you. And you'll feel grateful that when you do have children, if you have children, that they're going to have like very loving grandparents, you know, and cousins to play with and you know, all that good stuff. Now with the balancing act here, um, this also, I'm sorry, with the birth of magic card too, this could also talk about that unexpected abundance coming in. So like a job promotion, unexpected money coming in. It's really echoing a lot of that. Okay. Balancing act. Um, so yeah, at least one of you is very financially successful and quite busy, right? Like we were talking about before. So obviously in that first year of marriage, navigating that home and work-life balance. Um, but I think also setting the, setting kind of those boundaries maybe with the extended family members and figuring out how to have your alone time as a couple versus, you know, spending time with the extended family may be a bit of a balancing act as well. 
Okay, now we have the black and white stray cat outside. I haven't um, come up with what that signifies for your reading, but they're chilling outside and they're just staring directly at me. So if I get a little bit off topic or off track, that's why, because it's just very cute and it's an adorable distraction, but still a distraction. <laughs> okay. This Trespassers card was reminding me of group one um, because they had this energy of being really protective over each other. And I feel like you have that same energy as well in your marriage. But the difference here is that I feel like one of you is very protective. I don't feel like it's a mutual energy like it was in group one. I feel like in this reading, it's one of you is very protective. And one of you, and it may be your future spouse, um, may lose their temper a little bit if someone is disrespectful to you or treats you unfairly or just anything remotely like negative about you um, or your marriage. I feel like they will just like cut that other person down. You know, they may raise their voice. You know, they may um, act a little bit out of their character, but there's just this feeling of like, intense, you know, um, protection of the one that you love. And I think if you have children, um, it would be like that as well. Like you would have a kid that like no one could say, <laughs> you know, anything negative about, like, I, I feel like without your partner snapping a bit, um, cause there's just this feeling of, you know, of protectiveness and, um, and, and that may come out in the form of also being like an overprotective parent and like wanting to protect your kids from any negative experiences. And so, I mean, that may come up from time to time. It might just be something to be mindful of. Now, with the lighting the way card, um, I, I do feel like there may still be some things that you have to figure out on your own. You know, like as, suppo as supportive as, um, you know, your marriage is and, you know, as much support as you're getting from the extended family members as well, I think that there's still some things that you have to work out on your own. And that's where that Scorpio healing energy was coming from. Like, you know, your present can be really, really amazing but your past can still haunt you. And so I do feel like there's still in your first year of marriage, you know, when you get to a place of safety after feeling like you, you've you been struggling for so long, it's like your body feels like, okay, now I'm in this place of safety. I don't have to worry about, you know, my sort of like physical needs. Now I can break down into my emotional needs. And so there may be moments where you just find yourself crying and you don't know why, where you feel sad and you don't know why. And I think it's your body and your mind trying to process things from your past that you didn't, you know, it was almost like wasn't safe enough to let those feelings take over because you were focused on surviving the day, getting through the day, you know, like, yeah, I'm hurting, but I've got to get up and go to work and get a paycheck kind of thing. And so now when you have all of this security that you didn't have before and all of this support that you didn't have before, it's like, okay, now we're in a safe enough space to where we can cry, we can break down, we can delve into these darker, deeper emotions. And so, you know, you may feel a little bit frustrated with yourself, like, why am I crying? Why am I, you know, I should be happy, I should be happy. And I feel like the guidance here from spirit is, let yourself feel what you need to feel. You know, things can be really great in your present moment, but if there's some things still lingering from your past that you couldn't even afford to emotionally process before, let yourself process what you need to process because the more you repress it, the worse it's going to be. So just let it flow, let it out. If you need to cry, yell, scream, you know, if you need to go see a therapist, it's okay. It's okay. Like you're only human. And it doesn't mean that you're not grateful. And it doesn't mean that you don't have a happy marriage or anything like that. It's just some things from the past, some shadows from the past need to be dealt with. For others of you, though, this could just be speaking to this idea 
of your marriage almost like pushing you to another level of spiritual ascension. And that may be because all your physical needs are very much met. <laughs> you know, there's so much stability and security here and support. And so it's like, now I have the time and the space and the freedom to delve more into my spirituality. Um, and you know, Scorpio talks about the occult as well. So in your first year of marriage, you could be getting into meditation. You could be getting into reading your own tarot cards. You could be getting into crystals. Um, so, you know, if there's nothing lingering from your past, if that message wasn't resonating, it could be talking about you delving more into the occult and occult related topics. Also, honestly, if your future spouse is a different religion than you, um, cause we were getting that message about a different like cultural background that could be you exploring, um, their spiritual beliefs. I'm not necessarily picking up that they follow any like one religion or anything like that, but you know, they just could have some spiritual or cultural beliefs that are new and different to you. All right, let's look at your advice card for your first year of marriage. We have focused vanilla. Okay. So with this card here, I feel like spirit is saying, you know, it's good to focus on, of course, your relationship in your first year of marriage. It's good to focus on family. It's good to focus on building this beautiful life together, but don't forget to focus on yourself too. Don't be so focused on your partnership and your marriage that you neglect like your self care, your own personal goals. You know, don't get so wrapped up, I think, especially in like the family dynamics that you're not taking care of yourself and your own needs too. Okay, and this card here is going to give us a little hint about who your future spouse is. So we have the lovers. Okay, so definitely your divine counterpart. Um, so if you resonate as a divine feminine, then your future spouse will be the divine masculine. We're just talking about energy here, not gender. Um, but yeah, the lovers, they could also be a Gemini or have some significant Gemini placements as well. Um, this could be that soulmate connection that we were talking about as well with this card here. Um, let's see what else I'm getting from this. There could be an element of divine timing in terms of when you meet this person, if you feel like you haven't met them yet. Um, you could also meet them through sort of like a divinely orchestrated serendipitous kind of meeting. So it could be really unexpected out of the blue or um, some unusual circumstances that bring you two together. I'm also hearing that you two will share the same love languages and that both of you have very compatible Venus sign, Mars sign placements. I'm hearing that as well. Okay, so <laughs> also I should say for those of you who don't know anything about astrology, Venus and Mars are definitely like the love placements that you would look for with compatibility. Um, you know, your Venus sign really talks about like what you need in love, how you act in romantic relationships, and your Mars can talk about your physical intimacy. So definitely um, compatible in those areas. Okay, group two, this was your first year of marriage. I hope you enjoyed it. Please take care.
so let's take a look at your first year of marriage. Gracie just woke up from her nap, that's why I was laughing. Okay, we've got the King of Cups, we have the Star card, we have the Queen of Wands. I definitely feel like you have a very sweet relationship with your future spouse because I was drawn to the cute ghost tarot. We have the Knight of Coins, we have the Three of Cups, and then we also have the Seven of Wands here. Okay, group three, in your first year of marriage, there is a lot of busyness, there's a lot going on, but it's all good stuff. With the Seven of Wands, the way it's depicted here in this particular deck, look at how like all of this stuff, right? All of these things are coming at this little ghost and the ghost still looks happy, still looks content, like completely unbothered by all of these things. And I think it's because like, yes, you're busy, both of you are very busy in your first year of marriage, but you're busy with fun things. So it's like, there's a lot of trips, a lot of gatherings with friends. With the Three of Cups, there's a lot to celebrate, a lot of good stuff happening. And so like, yeah, it's a lot to manage, but it's like when it's things you enjoy doing, when it's fun things, you don't really mind it, right? You're not really bothered by it. And with the star card here, it's like, yeah, you're both, um, you know, sort of working on building this life together, but you're also pouring into the relationship with the water. You know, you're still pouring into the connection. And so, you know, other groups really had to figure out that balance. Whereas I feel like with you all group three, it like just comes naturally to you two. Now, I will say with the King of Cups and the Queen of Wands, you may seem like a bit of an odd couple, you know? Um, it could be this energy of like, your future spouse is really different than other people that you have been with before. Or it could be that you two just seem like opposites attract, you know, like an odd match. Um, but it works, you know, somehow it works really well. And with the King of Cups, you know, this is someone who's really emotionally intelligent, very sweet, affectionate, loving, caring, very compassionate, very empathic. The Queen of Wands, like she's someone who's very vivacious and exuberant and um, energetic and passionate and driven and funny and charming and... Um, really creative and optimistic you know she's like little miss sunshine over here and so i feel like there's a nice balance here and i feel like even though you two are really different you just get each other really well um with this knight of coins here i do feel like um both of you are also um pretty focused on getting your money right together and so this could be like navigating like okay we're combining our finances so what's our new budget going to look like what are our like monthly expenses going to look like you know maybe you tend to spend more money on food than they do or maybe um you know like especially <laughs> with the queen of wands over here um you know, like maybe she likes to spend more money on having a good time, whereas the King of Cups might spend a bit emotionally sometimes. <laughs> like if he's having a bad day, he might treat himself, uh, you know, to something to like make himself feel better. So, I mean, neither one of you is like the King or Queen of Pentacles, right? Like you may not be like super practical with your finances uh, in different ways though. And so I do feel like with the Knight of Coins, like you're figuring it out, you know, like you're navigating it. It can be kind of an undertaking, like combining your finances, right? Like money can be hard to talk about. And so, and that's not to say you're poor or you're broke or anything like that, but you're figuring out how to combine your expenses and figuring that out. And so, you know, it takes a minute, right? And so I feel like that might be kind of like the only hiccup that I'm seeing because with the star card I mean it's like a wish come true and you're very happy like both of you are very happy there's a lot of good stuff going on 
we'll get into it as we get into your oracle, but you know, I mean, not every single message is going to be 110% <laughs> like sunshine and roses, right? So I feel like if there is one thing to watch out for in your first year of marriage, it's having those open, honest discussions about money and figuring it out, okay? Okay, we have compassion. We have celebration. So you've gotten this message twice now because the three of cups is all about a celebration, right? Like they're toasting, we have resilience and we have simplicity. I feel like, okay, this is how it's going to go in your first year of marriage. Um, you know, you're figuring out combining your finances, right? You're figuring out how it's going to be now that you're a married couple, all of that good stuff, right? And I think in the beginning of the year, there's a lot of celebrations, a lot of gatherings with friends and having a good time and just enjoying being married and this new chapter of your lives together. But I think as the year goes on, there's like almost like this desire to like return to basics and to simplify things. And so I think that as the year progresses, it's almost like you two are like, okay, we've been having a lot of fun We've been celebrating a lot, maybe taking a lot of trips or visiting friends and visiting family and just having so much fun together. But it's almost like, okay, let's return to basics. Let's simplify things. Let's spend more like one-on-one -on -one time as a couple. You know, like we've been having a lot of people come visit us or we've been traveling a lot. Like let's just slow down let's take it easy and that may be why you're spending more money in the beginning of the year versus the second part of the year because if you're traveling or if you're hosting friends or you're going to a lot of parties a lot of gatherings you can just like start to spend money like you know a lot more frequently and so I feel like there's almost like this desire to like just slow down take it easy enjoy that one-on-one -on -one time and yeah, I, I think just return to basics. I keep hearing that again and again, return to basics. And so, um, yeah, I feel like also here as well with the compassion card and the way it's depicted here, especially there really is um, this willingness to compromise. And so I don't feel like you're as different as you two are. And I think that you two communicate very differently as well. But remember how I said somehow it works? It's like, yeah, you're very different, but it's almost to your benefit because when two people are too similar, it kind of can feel like the other person's holding up a mirror. And sometimes it's really difficult to deal with yourself, <laughs> okay? And so I've seen that a lot, especially in my family, like certain family members are just too similar. And if you said that to them, like, I have a cousin who is just like her dad, but she doesn't get along with her dad at all. And if you were to tell her you're just like your dad, she would be livid. But they're like the same person, but they butt heads so much because they both have very fiery personalities. And so it's just too much fire. And so I feel like if this queen of wands, like she may have dealt with a king of wands in the past and said, you know what? too similar, too much fire. And so she likes that this King of Cups balances her out, you know? And so I feel like um, that's a real strength in your marriage is that you two are different and somehow it works. And so, um, you know, there's a willingness for both of you to learn more about the other person. There's a willingness here to compromise. And so I don't feel like you guys fight a lot. And if you do fight or you have a disagreement, there is a willingness to talk it out and to see the other side and have compassion for the other person and not just trying to win the argument. You know, it's like, I want to speak to you to understand your perspective, not to win and to prove you wrong. And so I feel like that is one of the biggest strengths, I think, of your entire relationship. With the resilience card here, um, I love how the home is like being built from this heart space here. And so like this tree is growing here. And so especially here with the Knight of Coins, there could be a desire here 
to grow financially together so that you can provide for your children or um, like the family line, right? So you can create like, um, I'm hearing a legacy, a legacy. Now, some of you may not want children and that's fine. It could be that maybe you want to build a legacy like, okay, we've built this wealth over, you know, the span of our marriage, our life together. Now, when we're at the end of our life and we're leaving like our will, who do we want to leave our money to? So you may want to leave a legacy, like you may want to start a charitable um, foundation together, or maybe you want to donate money to a cause that both of you are really passionate about. So maybe both of you are big animal lovers and you want to leave your money to the SBCA or something like that. So, um, you know, legacy doesn't necessarily have to mean leaving money to your children. It could be just leaving money to something that both of you are very invested in and a cause that both of you, you know, like strongly believe in. There's, there's a desire here to leave a positive um, impact on the world, which is really beautiful and <laughs> not a message I was expecting to get. Um, in this reading, so that's very cute. Okay, this is a more specific message, but if you've ever wanted to be like a vlogger, I feel like you two, especially with the dynamic between your personalities, I think it's quite funny. And I think especially with the star card here and the three of cups, you two would be very successful if you started um, like a vlog channel together. Um, there's something about your relationship that's very entertaining and that other people would enjoy watching. Um, like I said, that's a way more like specific message, but um, if you're into that, you know, like maybe you've always wanted to start a YouTube channel, but you're not sure what kind of channel, um, just you talking with your <laughs> future spouse, um, you know, and like filming like your first year of marriage and things that you guys are doing together, I think people would actually want to tune into that. I feel like you could develop um, a following. I am also hearing that one of your big celebrations that you will have in your first year of marriage will be your housewarming party. So I don't know at what point in the year you'll be getting a house together or getting a new house together, but that will be one of the biggest celebrations of your first year of marriage will be your housewarming party. There's a lot of parties. I don't know if that's your thing or your future spouse's thing, but there's a lot of parties. There's like, listen, if you could, anything you could celebrate, y'all want to celebrate. Like it's all about having a good time and a sense of togetherness. So I don't know if you have a wide circle of friends or they have a wide circle of friends, but there's, or, you know, even just a close knit family. Although with the three of cups, I do think more friendship rather than family. Um, but there's definitely like something there about let's throw a party, <laughs> you know, <laughs> let's throw a get together. Um, yeah, there's definitely like, in, at least one of you enjoys like socializing. We have Taurus here. We have Earth. So Earth sign energy twice, right? Because Taurus is an Earth sign. We have Aries. And we have yang energy, which is divine masculine energy. Okay, I'm just going to move these cards a little bit so you can see everything. You can tell like by how warped these cards are that I'm pretty hard on my decks when I shuffle. I don't like, yeah, I'm not that delicate. I'm like, let's get the messages. <laughs> so I'm sorry that they're not like laying flat. Um, okay, so... You two are like both very physically attracted to each other, for sure. And there is a mutual love for like beauty and aesthetics. And so I feel like maybe at least one of you has a knack for interior design. Um, and there's an element here of like being thrifty, like liking luxury, but being thrifty about it. And so even if you two aren't you know, group two had like so much money. I mean, group two was like money, 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 money. Like there was just so much money in group two. And, you know, even if y'all aren't as rich as group two, 
in your first year of marriage, it's all good. Because y'all are like balling on a budget. You know, the dynamic here actually kind of makes me think of Candy and Todd on Real Housewives of Atlanta. So when they got together, and don't judge me for liking Real Housewives, but <laughs> when they got together, um, you know, Todd was definitely like someone who was very ambitious like he got a hard time from her mom but he really to me had like a strong work ethic was someone who really wanted to make something of himself and you know he had a job as a producer on the show and that's how he met candy and it was actually really cool like the group had taken a trip to Africa and I forget exactly where they were but they had went and gotten this um, and I apologize if I've mentioned this before on the channel but they have went and gotten this reading from someone and I don't know exactly what kind of reading it was but he was basically like reading things from I don't know if it was from these I can't remember if it was like rocks or like animal bones or something I just remember him like scattering a bunch of objects but I can't remember what they were and he said, your future partner, your husband is following you around. He's following you everywhere. And so everyone in the group was like rolling their eyes. Like, what does that mean? Oh, Candy's got a stalker. But he was literally following her everywhere because he was a producer on the show. <laughs> so he was following her everywhere. <laughs> you know, because he was part of filming. And so I don't know exactly what his job title was, but he was following her everywhere. And so, you know, like the reading was on point. And so um, anyway, Candy was in a much more like su financially um, successful place, but together they were able to work and to you know, sort of um, expand her brand. And so they put on a play together. They've opened up restaurants together. They've done so much together that I don't think she would have done if she had never met him. So I think there was something there about, yeah, he didn't come into the relationship having as much money as her, but he still added value and still encouraged her and helped her you know, expand into all of these other opportunities. And he has a lot of creative ideas, right? And so for you all, I think both of you are starting at a place where you're both kind of financially equal to each other. I don't think there is a big disparity in um, like your financial status. I think both of you are at that Knight of Pentacles level when you meet each other. But I think together you could get to like a King or Queen of Pentacles level together you could even reach the level of an emperor or an empress where you're very abundant. And so I feel like there's this energy of you two coming together and creating a lot of luxury and wealth because that's Taurus all day long. It's associated with the second house. Earth sign energy is very abundant energy. And so, you know, like together, you two could create a lot, especially with this Yang and this Aries energy together that is motivation. That is leadership energy. That is, let's start our own business energy. <laughs> like, you know, that is coming together and creating that legacy of wealth that we were talking about. So I think both of you start on this Knight of Pentacles, like equal playing field. But because of you coming together, it's like how Todd encouraged Candy into all of these different you know, opportunities for creating even more abundance and expanding her brand. It's like you two are coming together and creating a brand together. So there's something there about you two um, growing financially together, and it could be through a joint um, business venture. I hope that makes sense. And so you may not be doing all of that in your first year of marriage, but there's definitely talks about it. There's definitely talks about it. At the very least, there are talks about it. And so, you know, maybe you're talking to your future spouse and, and not your future. Well, I guess at that time, <laughs> they would be your husband or your wife. Y'all get what I'm saying, your person. Um, so you're talking to your person in your first year of marriage and you discover both of you have always wanted to, um, 
you know, like have your own business and both of you have always wanted to, I don't know, like open up a restaurant or something. And then you discover this mutual passion and you're like, you know what, let's do it. Let's figure it out. And so there's at least talks about it. Okay. I don't know why I always use opening a restaurant or running a restaurant as an example, because it's a very volatile business, but it just, I don't know. It's the first thing that comes to mind. So sorry about that, guys. Okay. We have Midsummer. Okay, I feel like this is um, contributing to what I was saying earlier about there almost is like this bookmark in um, your first year of marriage where like the first half of the year, it's like fun, 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 celebrate, celebrate. And then like the second half of the year, it's like, okay, let's get down to brass tacks. Let's return to basics. Let's like figure our stuff out. Like, you know, we've been having a good time, but like we need to get serious. You know, group one was planning for their future from the jump. Whereas, it, like, y'all, I feel like you want to settle into your marriage. You know, you want to have fun and enjoy the newness of it before you get all serious and start planning five years down the line. You know, like, there's a desire there to, like, be present and to enjoy being newlyweds. And there's nothing wrong with either approach, you know. Your marriage is just different, you know, than group one's marriage. Okay, we have divine justice here. We have tender hearted. We have abundance. And we have shine. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. You were the group that got a lot of extra messages with this deck. I think every other group only got like two or three cards. Um, okay. I definitely feel like this is probably the group that's had like a difficult time in love. This could be your future spouse's energy as well. But there's just this feeling of like, with the star card as well, of like, I really prayed for you. Like, I wish for you. I hoped for you. Like, you know, this this marriage feels like a blessing. It feels like karmically, this is what I deserve. And remember how I said like, you know, I was drawn to the ghost tarot for you all. So there's a real sweetness, you know, and I feel like the tender hearted card is echoing that sentiment that there's a real sweetness to your connection. You know, there's a coziness here. There's, you know, a lot of affection between you two. So much affection. So much, um, I think, deep emotional understanding between you two. And with the shine card, that makes me think of the star card as well. Um, like you two really blossoming together, really growing together and kind of almost like boosting each other's um, self-confidence as well. And with this abundance card, I do feel like it's when you're with your future spouse, when you're in your first year of marriage, that you are going to start laying the groundwork, especially in the second half of the year, having those talks about your financial future and what your goals are. And again, I think it's going to be in the later part of the first year of your marriage that you start to have those conversations. But I definitely feel like financially you two are going to grow together. And you know, here's another thing too. Wealth is very relative. <laughs> so, you know, like what I think of as rich and what you think of as rich, what I think of as abundant and what you think of as abundant, even versus what your future spouse views, <laughs> you know, can be very different, right? Like I remember I was listening to a radio show this is going to sound so like random, but Noel Gallagher from like the band Oasis was on and he was like telling um, Russell Brand like, oh, you're not rich. Russell Brand's a millionaire. <laughs> like he may not have as many millions as Noel Gallagher does, but he's a millionaire. To me, that's rich. You know, so I think, you know, wealth is relative. So me telling you, you and your future spouse are at the Knight of Pentacles level you may still be in a financially good place. This is just reading is just saying you're going to be in an even better place together. And so, you know, like wealth is relative. I just want to like throw in that disclaimer. Okay, we've got caffeine here. 
We've got the Chakra Fairy. Move that over. We've got Moon Secrets. And we've got the Brat, okay? <laughs> I always have to laugh when this card comes out because it's like, Spirit, did you really have to like shade me like this? <laughs> okay. All right, all right, all right. Um, with Moon Secrets and the Chakra Fairy, I definitely feel like this is a really um, healing and emotionally supportive connection. I definitely feel like there's a lot here about um, them being healthy for you and you being healthy for them. Like, it's not a toxic marriage by any means. I also think on, like, your day-to-day, -day, um, you two may... Um, help each other sort of improve your day-to-day -day routines. So I think you both are going to be a positive influence on each other, but in different ways. So like maybe they eat, um, you know, very healthy, whereas maybe you're like very physically active. And so like, you know, those good habits like rub off on each other, or maybe you always make sure you get at least eight hours of sleep, right? Whereas maybe they have a bad tendency to drink caffeine before bed. And so, you know, they have insomnia. And so like you're a positive influence on them in that way. Or, you know, like maybe one of you keeps a gratitude journal. And so the other person starts to do the same thing. Like, I feel like both of you help each other with like self care and having good habits that are good for your emotional, mental, physical, spiritual well-being. And so you know, you just help each other grow, um, you know, through your differences. I also feel like with Moon Secrets, um, you may find out some things about your future spouse that you never knew in your first year of marriage. You know, they may open up to you emotionally um, about things that have happened to them that you never knew before. And I think that might be very surprising to you. Um, and you could do the same thing. It could be that both of you Honestly, it might, whoever is the Queen of Wands, it might be the Queen of Wands who is opening up because the King of Cups, I feel like he would be already pretty open. So it may be the Queen of Wands, actually, who may be opening up more emotionally in the first year of marriage about, you know, her past. Okay. And then with the Brat card, I mean, listen. <laughs> listen. Um, I do think... I do think this is talking about that Queen of Wands. Um, you know, the King of Cups is so giving. So giving, okay? And the Queen of Wands, she can be a little bit uh, theatrical and a little bit maybe demanding sometimes, right? Like, if there is any queen who could be maybe a little bit melodramatic, <laughs> you know? And I say this as a Leo, um, you know, it would be the Queen of Wands. And so you know, just be mindful of that, you know, um, you remember we did have that willingness to compromise. So I don't think this is like a huge problem in your marriage at all. But I do think that if you're the queen of wands, let the king of cups get their way sometimes, you know, um, maybe just be mindful about maybe being a little bossy, you know, or maybe taking advantage of their generosity sometimes. Again, I don't think it's a huge problem. You know, we did pick up that willingness to compromise, but I think it's just something to be mindful of. You know, just because they're willing to spoil you doesn't mean you should necessarily take advantage of it because in the long term, you know, it could be harmful to your marriage. So just keep that in mind, keep that in check. Um, okay, and some of y'all are going to be mad at me <laughs> over that message if you think you're the queen of wands in this scenario, but I mean, it is what it is, right? Okay, with the caffeine card here, both of you could really just enjoy having a cup of coffee together in the morning, and that could be a part of your daily routine that you really, you know, cherish, you know? Um, I think it was, was it Johnny Cash who had said, like, happiness was just sharing a cup of coffee in the morning with you, like, that's happiness? Um, I could be totally misremembering who is associated with that quote, but I think it was Johnny Cash who said that. Um, but yeah, I think it's the little things. I think it's the little moments that you two really cherish. Um, you know, it's just those small little moments that I think 
you two are just both really grateful for, you know? Because um, you do genuinely just love being in each other's company. This really feels like um, you two are good friends. Like, you're not just romantic partners, you're really good friends, too. Okay. Maybe you'll open up a coffee shop together. <laughs> okay, anyway. So let's look at your advice cards for your first year of marriage, and then we'll get some clues about who your future spouse is. So we have Solitary Serena, and we have Adventurous Annie. I feel like this is picking up on that idea of, like, your first half of the year is really, like, fun, spending time with friends, celebrating a lot, and then the second half is, like, let's get back to basics and spend some one-on-one -on -one time. Um, I feel like it's echoing that sentiment here. But also, I feel like spirit is really coming through and saying, make sure you have balance in your marriage in every aspect. Strive for balance. Strive for balance, you know. Echoing that idea of like being willing to compromise, being willing to see the other person's side, you know, um, balancing saving for your future versus enjoying your money and having fun together. Balance, you know, you don't need to be cheap. But you also don't need to be like out here splurging all the time, you know, so having that balance, um, having that balance between spending time alone versus spending time together, you know, always look for how can I make this more balanced. Um, I, th I think that will be one of the key um, recipes for making this a successful, happy, long lasting marriage. Okay, we have the strength card here. And then we have the Hermit, aww. Okay, I feel like your cards are a little bit different. So this is Virgo energy, this is Leo energy. Um, but I feel like this is actually saying where your future spouse is right now in their life, um, especially if you feel like you haven't met this person yet. Because this looks like maybe they recently went through a breakup. Maybe they're just, you know, kind of tired of being single, maybe they're feeling a bit lonely, um, you know, maybe they've tried online dating and it's just like really discouraged them. And so, you know, sometimes they're in this energy of feeling like sorry for themselves. And then other times they're like, you know what, I'm just going to work on me, focus on me, try to live my best life as a single person. And, you know, it is what it is. I feel like sometimes they oscillate between those two energies. And, um, yeah, <laughs> well, this hermit card always makes me giggle. Look at the poor little kitty. Yeah, so I feel like this is just saying this is where they're at now in their lives, for sure. Okay, group three. <laughs> this was your reading. I hope you enjoyed it. Please take care.